hear me? Like in the back, can you hear me good or am I, could I speak louder? A little louder. Okay. We do have speakers. Yeah, I got, I got speakers. Uh, there we cool. go. All right, all right. So this is good. This is good. Oh yeah, this is good. I can hear myself now. Um, hey guys, my name is Philip Adioye. Um, I'm Nigerian, so that's why I have the last name that no one can pronounce, <laughs> which is all right. Um, I've been coming to CNCNG for quite a while, about um, less than a year now. The uh, and just like seeing people present, I'm like, oh yeah, I could maybe I, maybe I could try my hand at this. Maybe I might do something that might interest me and stuff and so i was like yeah i'm gonna come present and normally i um well, not normally but um i work as a dotnet developer um and i don't usually see the front end a whole lot and so i'm like okay angular and material design this is like stuff that is different from what i do on a daily basis i'm just trying my hand at it okay so material design is google's new design language and as a design language, it's, uh, it's an overarching scheme or style that guides the design of, the, of their product, uh, provides a consistent look and feel, and describes choices for design aspects such as materials, color schemes, shapes, patterns, textures, and layouts. And so this is um, a de design language, do I understand it outside of that definition is that it just sets the tone and says, okay, this is how everything should kind of look like. This is going to guide all, everything that everything that we design, all the products and all the like br the brand and everything is going to come from this design language. And so um, this app over here is going to look like it, it's gonna, it can be different from this app over here. But we all know that they are following this. We all know that they come from the same mind because they're following this language. And I got that definition from Wikipedia. Um, material design goals are to synthesize the classic principles of good design with the innovation and possibility of technology and science. And so, in their minds, they're taking, okay, so good design, typography, um, using types that work together with, with each other, typefaces that work together well with each other, and colors that blend well together to pre present a coherent um, user interface and they're blending those with the possibilities of technology and science and so things that weren't possible in the past are now possible and let's see how we can bring those together and present it to uh, users and material is, is to address uh, having a single underlying system that allows for a unified experience across all platforms and so what material design can target um, big screen interfaces like Mo mo desktop monitors all the way down to uh, Android Wear for uh, smart watches and so this same language can be used to design interfaces for monitors over here huge even not even TVs all the way down to little devices where the screen sizes are like really small and you have to make efficient use of all the space you have and um, they have in mind that touch voice mouse and keyboard are all first class input methods such that it shouldn't really matter what input you use what input device you're using to communicate with, uh, with with the computer it should all work seamlessly and so if, if there is a possibility for you to use voice you can also instead use the keyboard or use the mouse and things like that um, and well we're having trouble with sound but uh, this is a sort of like there is a visual introduction to material design if I can get that oh, 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 wait. Okay, just give me a second here, sorry. I'm going to max out my volume and hopefully that works out. So yeah, that's material design in a nutshell, and so you, um, it can be for like both like mobile and 
and the little square with the um, like the watch stuff and like that. Uh, let's see here. Am I presenting? Oh, there we go. Uh, and so uh, material design has these three principles, guiding principles, let's, let's call them that. Um, and then they say that a, a picture can, a, a picture is worth a thousand words. And so just by looking at these three pictures up here, we have, so it tells us so much, so, so much about it, but not really. Um, the first one is material is the metaphor. And so um, ma the material itself is, is this magical, Material really there's no other word to describe material. It's it's this magical material I can layer upon it upon it upon each other and it like and, it, and you can interact with it that way and um, bold graphic and intentional so the use of like really big pictures vivid color and um, motion provides meaning so the way when you interact with it the elements move around and they're like animations and those animations are not just to provide eye candy but also provide meaning for what's going on so material is a metaphor so rational space and motion and so um what, what that what's, what that sort of means is that whenever you interact with the material this is something that can actually happen in real life if that material were like physical if you interacted with it like in real life it makes sense with the reactions it it um it shows grounded in a tactile reality. It hacks back to rational space and motion. When you, when you touch it, it should respond to your touch. Uh, inspired by paper and ink, there are these effects. Whenever you, whenever you interact with materials, there are these rippling ink effects that I will show later on. And so it's inspired by paper, paper and ink. And um, light surface movements convey how objects move, interact, and exist with each other in space. And so. Um, <coughs> When, when you introduce a light into the material, the material world, surfaces will reflect that light. So materials that above other materials will cast shadows down to the ones beneath them. And also the movement, whenever a material moves, it can't intersect with another material. It must move around it or above it or beneath it. Uh, and should appear technologically advanced. And so there's some magic involved with it. And so in, open to in, 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 imagination and magic, you can take what they provide and imagine it differently. And whenever they were coming up with these principles, they actually took some of the they used paper, like actual paper and cardboard, and designed some of what the icons should look like to inform their decisions on how it materials should interact. It should be pot what what the interactions you you see on the interface should be possible in real life, for instance. And so like and they use those to like study shadows, like with the uh, with the clock there. So the the element above the one beneath it is casting a shadow down towards it. Uh, bold, graphic, and intentional. A type, the use of typography, grid space, scale, color, and use of imagery creates a hierarchy, meaning and focus. And so, the l larger things should be more, larger things are more prominent, and they should convey meaning as opposed to just being large and uh, colorful. Deliberate color choices, edge-to-edge -edge imagery, large-scale typography, and intentional white space immerse the user in the experience. And so you're not like you're not l l lost and searching for what you need to be looking at. It's it's right there. It's being put to you so that you can like so that it's it makes meaning right 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 off the bat. And core functionality is immediately apparent and provides waypoints for the user. So as you interact with it, it moves. It guides it guides you. That's where you need to where you need to go. What you need to be doing. Um, motion provides meaning. Uh, motion re respects and reinforces the user as the prime mover. So, the material shouldn't move by itself. It should obey the user. And so, when you interact with it, then it moves and it stops. And then you interact with it some more. Then it moves again. Keep and and flows and takes you through like your workflow, for instance. Uh, user motion can transform the whole design. Uh, motion serves to focus your attention and maintain continuity. And objects transform and re reorganize without breaking the, conti the continuity of the user's experience. And um, just to show that, OK, so here is this. It's a music player, for instance. And you start from the top. The, the, the image in the left-hand corner, when you interact with it, it's like 
goes down and it just sort of like guides you through what's happening and then you click play it like pops up the play and goes up to the start and so that's movement providing meaning to uh, uh, to your interaction and like letting you know like look this is what's happening Let's dig I'll just digress a little bit uh, and to present the material itself. Okay, um, this is presently, this is Google's spec for what material should be. And it's, there's no, there is, Google doesn't provide an implementation of material for any platform. They, all they do is provide a spec and if you want to use it, the material design language, you'll provide your own implementation of it following the, uh, the guidelines that they've set out in this document and um, so this materials material exists in a 3d space and so materials can layer above each other and they're all one device pick one device independent pixel thick and so on uh, on a monitor for on a big screen monitor one 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 a material is one is, is has the same thickness as it would on like a smartphone for instance uh, so device independent lights and shadows. So there is, in in material there is um, on the first image is the shadow cast by the key light. The key light is the light coming from above from above the the, the material. And then the ambient light is light reflected by the mat all the materials in that space. And they combine to form on the right side uh, over here the like the the combined shadow. And um, okay, and so they provide some sort of like guidelines for what material is. It's it's flat. There is no sense of volume to any of the elements. They're all flat, and they layer on top of each other. And can be they can lay on top of each other and be side by side. Um, so you the heights and the the elevation. Let's say there's a there's a there's a plane, and materials can be on different elevations, but they never. They never occupy more than one pixel, one device independent pixel in um, in the z axis. Let's just put it that way. And so, uh, materials cast shadows, and they cast shadows directly to the layer directly beneath them, and the light is coming from directly above them perpendicularly. And so, they can cast direct shadows, but they cannot cast like shadows off to the side, for instance, like in here. Yeah, so, you don't do that, as you do what's initially presented. Um, materials can display any contact, content on them, and but you can't like, uh, you, you can also do this, you can also like, the material can also like move and change shapes and, and but like materials can, when an event that happens on one level doesn't pass through to the level beneath it, anything that happens on, on, on a level up on, on a material surface stays on that surface, starts and dies on that surface. It doesn't bubble through or pass down to a layer beneath it. And materials must, like, I, like I've constantly mentioned, they must have, their, they must be like, they can stack, but they can never be on the same level. They can never like intersect like this, like in the, picture over here like don't do that with material and um, yeah materials can't pass through each other and they can transform shape go from a circle to a square and get began the materials can be destroyed and be and healed um, and the mission they have this notion of authentic motion whereby all every material has um, mass, let's put it that way. So heavier materials should move slowly compared to uh, lighter materials or lighter elements in the material uh, landscape. <laughs> yeah, and, so, and they have, um, whenever, whenever things move, their easing should be, they should, move, they should start moving quickly and decelerate slowly. And so that, you, so that the users don't get like, they're not attracted to what's not important when it's when something's leaving it should be leaving and you forget about it and like whenever whenever a material comes into the plane it should come in as fast it should come in as though it's like come from a far away place and it's moving at high at peak velocity whenever it's entering and then it should slow down whenever it gets to its like final rest destination its resting place 
And so this is like an example of w how animations should work and it's an example of how they shouldn't work. It's like in, in this example, there's the linear um, easing where it just kind of where it has the same velocity from start to finish and that's not, it's not really acceptable for the material design language. Uh, responsive interaction. And so like uh, when I talked about the rippling and when and uh, materials responding to touch. And so th in this example over here, uh, you can see like when it's when a, when a when an element is touched, the it ripples, a ripple forms from where it, the interaction was made. Uh, like yeah, and like whenever there's uh, interaction on the, like on the right hand side, the the third one over there, like the 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 effects ripple out to the to to all the other elements that need to change as well, and so it it makes it appear that there was a change here and it's moving over like a like a wave going out to meet the other, the other um, elements and so like where can you find material uh, you can be found um, on android lollipop if you have um, uh, and if you have an android device android l and you, you, pre you presently have material design on there if you have the the newest uh, google apps uh, gmail uh, Google Keep, then you have you have material design on there already, already implemented for Android. Uh, it's it's Google has it for it's uh, for Android and for the web as well, and so it's also available on Android Auto, which is slowly getting into more and more vehicles. And so there's Android in the car, and uh, e and it it's works such that and this is how long with Angular, but it works such that you can have you, what, what you're using on your phone right right here you can go into your car and then your phone will pick up right where you where your car will pick up where your phone left and whenever you're leaving the car the phone will pick up from wherever um you, you left with the car and um this is just um it's also on, you can also find on google apps gmail google keep google maps presently Okay. And for the web, it's presently material design is presently available for Polymer and Angular JS. It's also available for Bootstrap if you want to include it as a Bootstrap theme. It's also available there. Uh, and I'm just going to talk about Polymer a little bit. Um, okay, so Polymer is a project to that's built on web components. The, that's the standard that allows for creating custom HTML elements that bundle HTML, the CSS, and the JavaScript all together in, in one you know, tag. So let, let's see your div tag, for instance, can become like a Google Maps tag, as they have in this example here, if you can see that. And so you can just you can simply import that element into your page and use and, and use it as the same way you could just use a div tag for in, for instance or a bold tag um, and this is a product that's in is very much a beta like this is the d developer preview right now and so it's not like production ready by any stretch of the imagination uh, okay. It, Polymer is a JavaScript library built on web, com web components, like I mentioned before. Uh, its web co components are a collection of <laughs> W3C, that's the World Wide Web Consortium. The, uh, there are standards that enable you to bundle HTML, JavaScript, and CSS all together and easily distribute them. Um, so let's say you want to create, this as, just an as, as an aside, you want to create a Polymer element that just showed hello. And so um, you'd the, the markup sort of looks like this. this is a very, very basic example of a Polymer element. And um, you define it this way with a po Polymer element uh, root tag, and then you specify the name, and then the template section. The template is, a, is a, I think it's a new, I'm not entirely sure how new it is, but it's a, it's a HTML standard element. And so you can like use it to define um, like a template for what this element would look like, and then that's the script tag for the JavaScript. The JavaScript goes in where the script tag is, and your HTML and CSS goes where the template tag is, and all that will render out to the results. And in the DOM, whenever you inspect it with like the 
dev tools this is what will be rendered out to the browser and uh, just to compare polymer and angular because if, if those of us familiar with angular would know that you can define custom elements with directives and so comparing um they're very, they're very similar, but they're also very different as well. Uh, Polymer is, is a library, just a library for creating reusable web components, while Angular is a full-scale framework for creating web apps. I mean, Polymer doesn't come with anything to handle routing, and it, it has some core services, but they aren't as fully-fledged or um, as extensible as Angular services. I can't be as not, I, I feel they're not easy to, let's say, not, it's not as, the ecosystem is not as big. And so you, Angular is sort of like, you still would use that. And it's, Angular is, is mature, I mean, you know, 1.3, um, version 1.3 is out right now, but Polymer is still like 0 0.26, so not already for prime time. Uh, Polymer is built on web standards, so those web, web components are, are standard, but Angular, t Ang Angular isn't, but uh, Angular 2.0 is going to address that with, with um, building on the web components API, and that's where a lot of the differences between Angular 1.2 1, 1 and, and 2.0 are coming. And so there's, there's going to be a shift in the way Angular looks. I mean, the syntax is going to be different, but, um, but it's, it's going to be built now on standards, and going on from there will be easier to like adhere to like web standards. Uh, Polymer custom elements are similar to Angular directives, but Polymer includes CSS encapsulation while Angular doesn't. And so with Polymer elements, the CSS you declare in that template section is only for that element. It doesn't, doesn't, uh, doesn't affect the rest of the page as opposed to with, with Angular. If you can have that in, you can have CSS in your directive, but it's available to every other element on that page. So that's a difference between the two of them. Um, with I, 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 during my research for this, I came across scoped CSS. So you can declare um, CSS within it. So you can have a parent tag, let's say a div, for instance. I can have a style tag beneath that. And you can scope the CSS in inside to, to its parent scope. But it's not implemented on all browsers yet. And so I mean, it, the standard is there, and it's you can use that, but it's not going to work in any of the browsers presently out there. And so, but Polymer takes care of that for you. So, if you use Polymer, you'll have your CSS locked down to just that element. Uh, both do provide templating and bidirectional data binding. And so, the way you have your double, they both use the double, the double curly braces for data binding. And so, the syntax is fairly similar. So, coming from Angular Gnome to Polymer, and vice versa, would find it quite easy to just like to migrate and um, angular material okay and so um, these this is the angular material this, this is an implementation of the material design language for angular js and so that's what this project is about and there's a couple of demos um, so de um, and these demos are they are the, the demos of uh, elements such that you, that you can use in your project. Like this is a bottom sheet that comes up from the bottom of the page or the bottom of the container, really. And you can show the actions available as, as a list. And you can close that and you can show it as a grid. And if you go into this website, you can, the directive, the, the, the Angular directive that allows you to do all of this is listed like right here. So you can jump right from the demo to the API. And that's, is that big enough for everyone to see? Okay, good. Um, and so the usage will be, it's, it's, it's all Angular. So it, you, you have your, your, your markup and then your app, you have your the name, the, the name of the module and the dependency. Depend, all 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 apps that ha, that you make use of in Angular Material must include this in, include this dependency, um, this module really. Uh, and then uh, you have your controller and passing your scope and yeah, you just call the you call the the service and then passing your template, and then you, you render all of that in here as your bottom sheet. So that's just the usage of the bottom sheet. Um, and then you have elements like buttons, and you have different ways you can style them. You can have it just like a basic button. And, well, and I, I mentioned the ink effects, and so that's the ink effect, and it's like the ripples. 
uh, they call it the rippling effect ink and you can style some of them to not have that effect and disabled buttons and warnings and uh, the angular not angular sorry the material specification has it has a very defi a clearly defined um, color scheme where you can pick from three colors yeah they're they're big on big vivid imagery and like lots of bright colors and so you have um, you have your primary colors and these are not necessarily red green and blue or red yellow and red yellow and red red yellow and blue yeah the answer is primary colors but those aren't the primary colors in this case primary colors are colors that they feel go well with each other so you can have all any of three of these colors um, in a page and it should look just fine it shouldn't be there shouldn't be a color riot as some would say or <laughs> it shouldn't be a color riot and so all these colors sort of like work well to each other and with each other and then there are the accents and so let's say you, you pick three main colors and one accent color the three main colors are the three primary colors are the colors that you can use uh, for for this for describing like big things like you have a like a like a toolbar up at up at the top that would be a primary color and then you have your actions let's say you want to like have an add button that would be you have, that would take on your accent color and so they have a very well defined color scheme for that um and so you have like like check boxes and these are like they all they all have that like rippling effect but i, I found that the <laughs> the polymer elements which are the which was the first implementation of material design actually has definitely sort of like look better than um than there's paper elements okay. they actually look better than like let's say for the checkbox for instance the animations are nicer because this the checkbox here will turn into a tick sign after that little pulsating animation there but the material but the angular ones aren't quite as nice but i mean it's all it's all just ui effects and it's all just ui effects and um and so I put together a little demo, just a little to-do list demo, just to, to, to educate myself on using these components. And so um, actually, the demo is, if you go to the AngularJS uh, org site, okay. it's really just this. Um, this to-do list here for the most part but this is just using regular HTML elements but I said to use the material elements to implement that <coughs> and um, you can you can get these the angular material project on github uh, let's see here Until so, uh, this this on on the site, it, there's a link to the GitHub repository, and you can download it from there. Um, you can either like check out the project if you want to contribute to it, or you could um, just go down and get it with with um, with. You can get the bar packages, or you can use the Google. You can use the CDN, and so you can just like plug it directly without having to download anything. Um, but I found that you, uh, some of the links on the CDN aren't quite, they don't give you everything. And so I had trouble with like configuring it on, on but I have to, like mix and match with both the, C, with, with the links in the CDN here. And like, so develop the, the, the list down here is for like, it's like everything that's is fresh off the presses. I mean, right, they've been working on this like yesterday. And so it's right there. But then these are the ones that they think are stable. Which aren't. I found these ones to be a little bit problematic. The so, just I mean, it's really in develop. It's very much in development. They're taking out. There, there are some elements that they've taken out to work on, and they're no longer part of the main uh, of the project. And uh, they, they, they have like little like notices that don't, don't use this for this time. And we'll, we'll get it back into the project eventually. <coughs> And so, uh, just uh, to, uh, like a walkthrough of this app uh, is the head section. I include the material, um, the the Angular material C uh, CSS up here. I go out to Google's fonts to get um, the Roboto. Roboto is the font for material. That's the 
that's the font that I used in the presentation. Um, nope, nope, nope. And yeah, and the demo as well. And so uh, just, a, just really simply, I use a toolbar up at the top. Can everyone see the code real fine? OK. I wasn't really sure of the, um, like, what color scheme to have up there. And so this is the toolbar up here, the MD toolbar. That's a directive for putting toolbars. And you can, you can split your toolbar into, like, have to have different sections. You have your, your title on the left. You can have some extra buttons on the right. The, the toolbar so is really customizable. And um, you can, every, every, everything I used here can be found, like, right here, the directives. And so MD toolbar, there we go. And this sort of like just tells you how to like how to use it, and you can just like plug that right in. Um, and then my controller, I just get all my to dos, and I'm using the controller as a syntax, so I can get without having to like use just the glo this global scope the global scope um, direct element directive. Um, so I can just use that and um, have my little form here for inputting new uh, tasks. Let's say. Um, Finish the demo, and I can add that in there, and it shows up in my list. And uh, so, blue is my primary color, and red, pink. <laughs> it's actually pink, and pink is my accent color. And so, th the main the main action on the page g gets the accent color, and that's the add button there. Um, and so, I get like I, I then I can the, the all inputs all inputs must be in a MD input container and the layout system the layout system um, the, the way you the way, uh, so it uses CSS flexbox which I didn't really know which I don't really know very much about but it's uh, it's a way of 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 doing a responsive layouts and so you can simply say this element here is going all, all its children are going to be in a row and so that's that's what this uh, right here. That's in that all the elements in that are going to be in in a row. And uh, this little demo here shows it some. And so you can look at the source. And um, every, so all the all the elements in okay. So this the, the root div element here is the entire the entire box. And then. Uh, it says that it, uh, it's the elements inside are going to be in a row, and so there's going to be one on the left, and there's going to be one on the right, and because there are two of them, this flex flex simply means take up all the space you can, and so um, there's, since there are two of them, one is going to take up 50%, and the other is going to take up 50%, and the small column here, like layout small, those are so additional directives that you can add to target the device sizes, for instance, and there is a um, there's a specification here we go of what exactly they mean. Also, like layout small, it's, it sets the layouts on devices less than 600 pixel wide, and so if your device is less than 600 pixel wide, then <coughs> and then then you can specifically target elements that way. And there is just an example of one of them hiding when it, whenever it gets. Like whenever the res resolution gets small enough, if I can find it. <laughs> uh, there we go. Okay. So with this this demo here, if it um, can it not show up at once, but all all the elements I know row, and and there are three divs one, two, and three. But the third one has a hide small. So whenever the Whenever the the screen, whenever the width of the screen gets small enough, to uh, it, it 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 goes into hiding, and so I can show that by squishing this enough, and there we go, it's gone. And so you can target it that way, and then it's back whenever the screen size gets big enough to to accommodate all of them. And uh, f flex has the flex L the flex directive. CSS, it's not really a directive, but um, flex can be set to multiples of fives or 33% and 66%. Um, and, and so uh, percent value, so percentage of how wide, how, the percentage of their 
parent they should how wide their parent the percentage of their parents width they should be and so this one takes up 33 percent the one in the middle takes up 55 55 is a multiple of five so you can do that and then if you just set flex it takes up the rest as much as it can and so the last one takes up the rest of the space so that's the layout um that's just kind of that's how layout is done with um with the angular material um just the rest of the demo i um, have a list and i repeat over all my to do's and render them uh, the checkbox and uh, and the title and at the bottom i have a like an md white frame which is just that that little white box there and so um whenever my tasks aren't completed sort of like a status bar tells me that oh yeah i haven't i've told them i haven't done one of them isn't done and oh i've done all the tasks and i'm winning how nice i haven't finished the demo yet but let me down unchecked uh <laughs> okay uh, and so what my the i have been for this demo i decided to follow uh, john papa's style guide so it's a very opinionated style guide on how your angular code should look so it has nothing to do with styling as far as css but style as far as like what your code should be so it covers pretty much everything that you can do it doesn't cover too much of testing but um says things should have like single responsibilities so like a code file that has your module declaration should be just that angular dot module and specify the name of your module and then these dependencies and that's what it should do and your controller should simply have the code for for it for itself it shouldn't like do more than it shouldn't do more than it should be doing and um, it has uh, it has he has he specifies styles for like how you should write your modules your controllers your services factories and on and on or how you should do minification and otherwise so, so I, I sort of followed that with this little demo here and so my <coughs> my my module file just has just the declaration of my modules so I depend on ng material and ng messages and that's and that's all that's in that file and um, I think configs where I specify that oh, my primary color is blue and my accent color is pink <coughs> using the MD theming provider uh, in as as when I'm when I'm calling my configs and so that's here and uh, my controller itself is in a immediately invoked function expression I I F E <laughs> so I don't remember that and so I so my function my controller is uh, my to do controller and I I call it on, I, I call, so I use the getter syntax for the module and angular the module, I'm getting that module and then I'm attaching this controller to it. And so, um, and so I, I, using the controller as syntax, I can use this as the controller's context and I set it to a variable as my view model VM. That's, um, the, that's what the style sort of specifies and I'm just going to do that. And, and my to do's, I'm instead of attaching them to like scope dot to do's, I'm just going vm my view model dot to do's, and I attached like a seed for in uh, that's just like a seed just to get a couple of things in there. And um, my functions, so even if I click the add button, um, I, I call this add dot to do's, I push a new, I push whatever was in the input box there, and it's not done, of course. Uh, and then I and then right here, this is what gets my um, my counts. And so, uh, for each of them, is it done? If it's not done, um, add one to the count. Says I, that's what's remaining. Uh, and archive is simply just delete, delete the done to dos. Um, and <laughs> cardinality, because whenever I was working on this, I was like, oh, was one of one aren't done yet, and that's not proper English. And so, one of one isn't done yet. And it's just a little ode to grammar there. And uh, yeah, that's that's material design. In a nutshell. I mean, there's there's so much more to it than than I can cover. Um, you can uh, just the uh, links to the material design spec, polymer polymer project, paper elements, uh, the st the style guide, and <coughs> Bootstrap. There's a Bootstrap project that does an implementation of the material of the material design language such that if you don't want to use polymer or you don't want to use angular you can take your 
present just raw JavaScript, uh, just, just a raw project, and apply bootstrap, just use bootstrap styles with there. And like, it's really, really simple. Um, like, just all, all of it is just <coughs> attaching classes, like regular bootstrap classes, but you have extra CSS that make the styles them like that, and they have all the rippling effects. And so this is like something that you can use today, for instance. I mean, you don't have to like write a brand new project. It's just add a bunch of styles. And yeah. So yeah. Any questions? Do you know if Angular 2.0 is going to use Polymer as, it's, as, it's a, as a way to do the uh, what I, from what I've been reading, no, they're separate projects, but Angular is going to, they're going to base those, they're going to base 2.0 on web, web components. So they're going to follow the web, sta the web component standard to act to in creating, uh, in creating those, uh, in creating web and uh, Angular 2.0. And webcomponents.org is a site that you can like you can go to and like this is, this is so this is the web component spec that covers custom el creating of custom elements uh, HTML imports so you can incl include another HTML file into your into your uh, your project or your HTML files just by using uh, the so the way you normally include CSS is link rel is equals to style sheet and so rel will be import and then your href would be the URL to to your HTML file they're trying to in, in, import into your project. And then templates is what spe specifies how you write the template, that template section that went into the polymer element. That's the specification. And then the shadow DOM, which is its own uh, specification. Uh, um, it's about like how you can have the presentation of your elements be different. So like whenever you, ins you view source, for instance, right click view source, what you see there is different from what's really beneath there. And so your shadow DOM is encapsulated by the composed DOM. And so, yeah, I mean, this is a specification all to itself. And then um, browser support for, um, and this is actually different than, yes than yesterday, actually. Um, browser support for the standards and so, um, Chrome supports pretty much all the standards right now, but IE doesn't for anything. <laughs> <laughs> not, not surprising. <laughs> and so, yeah. And so, yes. Did that, that answer your question, right? Okay. Oh. Anybody else? That in production, I I. I don't know if this is production. <laughs> it's I think it's just a demo as well. But um, this is an an app that I found. Um, and so it's like a basketball. It's a basketball. It goes out to NBA.com and gets stats on basketball games. And so uh, USA against Finland, and you can see, see the stats of the game for all the players of so the Team USA and Team Finland, and you um, can go back. And that's using Material? That is using Material Angular, yes. Um, there is another, pr I can show a video of a project that, I wouldn't say it's in production as much as it is, um, it's a demo for a client um, between Polymer and Angular. And monomer. There we go. And so, the, and so yeah, this uh, this article goes into the differences between Polymer and Angular, and welcome to the future. Uh, so down at the very bottom here, I keep going. Okay, where did that go? No, oh no, oh no, oh no. This was here yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> there was a there was a demo of um oh, creep. I did No, not this one. This is not the video. This is not the video. Um it's Or is it 
Ainda tem para o outro lado. Oh, eu acho que é esse lado. Ok. Ah, eu acho que é esse lado. E então, isso é uma demo para... É uma... É uma aplicação de mapa. E eu não posso full screen. Unless I go to YouTube. So using like there's a toolbar up at the top, and then um, like a search, it just walks through the thing, and then like searches for things. And so this, I will say this is in production, but it is getting there. I mean, I don't own the site or anything. I just found the video on on the internet, and so it's a demo for a client as as much as I know about it, and so. Yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's I, I I wouldn't say it's production ready. It's not because it's been it's changing every day, and like one of um, the, the the input element that I used for my to do list, just going off of what was provided in the C, on the CDN there, I couldn't get it to style properly. I mean, I spent uh, just like an hour or so just trying to mess with the markup to see if that would work, but not none of that helped. And then I replaced the CSS link I had up there with the latest version of like the hot of the presses and that worked for styling and so i mean if you had this in production i mean any day something could go wrong and you wouldn't want that happening so i would say no who owns the angular material project on github uh i think his name is thomas burleson burleson the guy who made this presentation thomas burleson yeah that guy um so the github is github Mm -hmm. And so the the the, the group um, actually on in in his slideshow he has the 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 team like everyone who's working on it. Nope. There we go. There we go. Um, nope. Not there. I uh, this is slides.com and I'm not really. Like just like lots of ways to navigate the thing. There we go. So that's the Angular Material team, and it's small. And are they all Google? Are they all Google people? I don't know. It's just Google. Just two Google. There's like four or so Google people there. One, two, three, four. So. Yes. Yeah, so there's a couple from the Ionic framework under there. Yeah, um, so I think even in the next slide, I'm not sure. But like the main, the two main people are the CEO of Ionic and Thomas Burleson. And I wish I could navigate this thing better. <laughs> it's such a uh. oh yeah, and like these are like the timeline for more things, um, grids. And so they presently there isn't a date picker for Angular material. So if you wanted to select dates, you'd have to use like jQuery UI for your dates. But uh, the, the, and the, the spec only added in what, pick, what date pickers and time pickers should look like in November. And that's the material spec itself. And if you can see that. Uh, can you talk about that color again when you're talking about picking three? Are you talking about from each column in a row? Okay. Uh, actually. Okay, so they would like you to pick the 500 color. That's the main one okay. as your primary color. That's this is the 500 colors. The accent is inside that. The accent are the A ones, like this A100, A200. And so those would be your accent colors. And you can, um, depending on, there we go. Depending on what your accent color is, you can pick like. Let's say A400 and A700. One of them is too dark. One of them is too light to really work with your. Um, there we go. So one of them is. So this is this is good and this is bad because. But they're the same. They're the same color. Just the same pink. But one of them is light and one of them is dark. And so you pick the one that looks better. Base. Yeah. Better contrast. Yeah. It's, uh, these are some of the guidelines for picking colors. Yeah, this is very, very detailed. Oh, yeah, I was, I was going to look for the color pickers. Uh, if I can find the thing. There we go. 
date pickers. So like, um, so the date picker should look like that. And so whenever you click date input field, you get this big old calendar really to show you everything and <coughs> time pickers will look just like that. So if you if you um, like on I have the the stock the stock Android app I have for my clock just has the time picker it looks just like that. And so as so you can you, you touch and move them around and so like pulse it while you do that. It's really neat actually. Yeah, there's some good ones. There's some. There are many not good ones. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and it all depends on like what um, what your CSS, what the rest of your CSS looks like. So you, to get one that really, that matches the rest of everything. Yeah, and if you're just using like stock Bootstrap, I mean it becomes easy because <laughs> the stock thing for whatever else you're looking for is is gonna be there. But whenever you start getting to your own, your own specific uh, colors and stuff, and that's why Material will be very good for that because you have your three colors and you specifying your theme is really easy. You see, um, primary color is this, um, secondary color. Uh, Accent colors that, and then those three colors or those four colors are available throughout your application. And all you have to do is say, um, like here in the demo, to make this to make the button my accent color. I had I just all I simply did was, um, yeah, give it the class accent, and that was it. It got the color. So, so that works great for like material design. Mm -hmm. Let's say like that clock that you had there. Someone mm -hmm. created a bootstrap clock that's very similar to the one that's on Android. Um, how, how how do they how well do they code this? In other words, it's not just a matter of applying the CSS, I imagine. No, it's not just so a matter of applying the CSS. Yeah. The components kind of have to be designed. Mm -hmm. to yeah. Yes, and yeah, the components have to be designed to support that because all the animations and all the animations that go into it. I mean, they are using. Uh, um, keyframes, so it's like CSS3 animations that I don't know very much about. And so those are what they use for a lot of the, for a lot of the animations, that's what they, they use for that. So it's not, it wouldn't be just adding a class. And so that component that you get, for instance, you could just import it. That's, and that's where the web components th comes in. So you can simply use rel to Google's date picker or whoever's date picker and you just in, in, import it there and then set your styles and that should take care of it. But I mean, we're not yet there yet. That's the future. Like Polymer lets us know. And so um, getting there eventually. Have you experimented at all with non material design components? Uh, Drags, you know, applying the I, I haven't tried creating my own components, no. Mm-hmm. So you, I, uh, what, what I'm trying to ask is, it like for, you mean like in like all my experience, have I tried to use someone else's components from somewhere? Oh, you mean just, just in prep for this? Oh, just in, for this prep for this demo, I didn't add any elements from anywhere else okay. because this is not Polymer, this is not web element, so you can't really to do that. You would have to like use like, um, like you'd have to import it. To, it's, it's Angular, so if you had an Angular element, an Angular um, module somewhere, you could add that to your project. But I didn't, you know, I didn't go out specifically to get any elements to add to it. I mean, it, and and it's yeah. So it's just the DOM. So if you ha if you had, you can use jQuery in here as well, and so you could wrap up a jQuery um, a jQuery plugin as a directive, and then use it to style. Um, no, I mean, I, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. I, don't know. I, didn't, I didn't look to see if there's jQuery for this, yeah. But, yep, yep there probably is, I mean, it's, it's, I mean, there's, an, there's Angular and there's Bootstrap, so there's probably a jQuery UI theme for Material. Let me just check right now. Yeah, <laughs> and so yeah, yeah, there it is. 
Yeah, and um, there is the there's the official uh, Angular. I have so many tabs now. I'm confused. There's the official uh, forum for Angular Material, and so like if you have questions about it, general questions, because that's they, they 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 encourage asking questions about it. And so if if you have a question about it, you can go to the forum and ask the questions there. If I can find it, nope, 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 nope. No. Uh, you, you do have to join the ng material forum. Yeah, so um, if you have people asking questions about date inputs in Chrome and um, custom colors and all those sort of things. So, I mean, I found one of the solutions for one of the problems I had in there as well for the icons. So there's, a, there's, a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a directive MD icon, and but it's in some of the, in some of the documentation. It's there, as that's what allows you to have. Um, So it allows you to have the icon, like the clock icon, inside of that button. But, and so it's here, MD icon. But if you looked in the directives, you wouldn't find it anywhere there. So there's I input divider, and so there's no icon there. And what I found out in the forums that they've taken it out of public release because it's not, it doesn't really work very well. And so. There's, yeah, there's a lot you can find in the forums if you have like questions just regarding like this is not working or how do I do this? How do I make a fab button appear over scrolling list and stuff like that? Yeah. 